our Spring Killerinos. Today I'm here with a very unusual guest, Ed Miliband. Welcome, hello. Thank you very much, nice. good to be with you. Thank you very much. Um, you might know who Ed Miliband is, I hope you do. He's the leader of the Labour Party and we're going to be talking today about why you should vote. So before we start the video at all, just like to let you know, it's not who you should vote for, that's not what we're trying to do, just to let you know why you should vote in case you are of voting age and you're thinking about it or you're thinking about not, we just thought we would talk about that. So. Ed, could you tell me a little bit about what it's like to be the leader and just a little bit about your party, just in case people have no idea about politics at all? So I'm leader of the Labour Party and the uh, Labour Party was founded about 100 years ago. I'm very proud to be leader of the Labour of Party. Course, yeah. uh, what's the most important thing about our party? We're trying to stand up for everybody in our society, not just a few people at the top of the country, mm -hmm. the, the richest and most powerful. You know, we're trying to stand for ordinary working people. That's what we've always done uh, as a party. So, you know, the National Health Service happened because of a Labour government. The minimum wage happened because of a Labour government. Those big historic things that have happened in our country, which people are still benefiting from today. Yes, I've benefited from the NHS when I had my daughter. Exactly. And so very nice to me. And so many people across our country have. So, uh, you know, I'm obviously very proud to be leader, looking forward, I hope, to being Prime Minister and doing more things for the country. But, but that's a sort of potted history of yeah, our party. Yeah, in a nutshell. In a nutshell. History. So you must be very passionate about politics if you've got to where you are. What started that passion? Have you always been into it or was it something else that triggered it? Where did that come from? I think from? it's probably to do with my parents. So mm -hmm. my parents are, well my dad's no longer alive, but my mum is a refugee, they were both refugees. Um, they were Jews who fled from the Nazis. Mm -hmm. And uh, my dad came over from Belgium in 1940 and my mum was in hiding during the war and then came after she lost her father in the, in the war. And um, I think if that, you have that kind of life experience, it makes you kind of realise politics. Care. Well, it makes you care, makes you realise politics matters. And I suppose that's the way they brought me up, is to think it, it, it mattered and you, know, you should just, you should try and sort of make the world a better place. They must be very proud of you then. My mum is, yeah, she, she The leader she, of the Labour is, Party. She, I think she is proud. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, um, uh, she, she's very good about not sort of telling me off about politics. Uh, she sort well, of, that's but, handy. yeah, exactly. But she's um, no, I think she she is proud, and uh, you know, but but I think th what they want is probably what you want for your daughter, which is that that which she's always wanted is that I'm happy and doing the thing I enjoy. Yes. So I think she's the thing she cares most about is the fact that I'm doing something that I enjoy and that I care about. Not Good. it's not so much for her the status thing. You know what I mean? She's just happy you're happy. That's, yeah. a, mother, that's a mother's love for it you. Is. It my is. My dad is very proud that you're on my channel. Oh, good. He's in America at the oh, moment. Good. He's like, I'll be thinking of you oh, at well, six. Oh, that's good. So I'll oh, let him know. Where does he live in America? Uh, no, he's just um, traveling oh, for business at the oh, moment. Right. But he lives in Northampton. But he's oh, like, fantastic. I'll be thinking of you at six. Oh, good. Let me know how What's it goes. What's his name? Steve. Hello, Steve. Oh, don't. <laughs> <laughs> this is day made, that is. We'll be very happy about that. So that's a little bit about your yeah. party and what you do and why you do it. Why should people vote? Because I'll have to be honest, mm. I voted when I was 18 because mm -hmm. I was so excited that I could have the opportunity to do it because in the UK you have to be over 18 yeah. in case you didn't know. Um, but I actually haven't voted since. Is and that I've right? Yes. I've got to persuade you, don't I? Well, you don't have to persuade me, but you have to help I'll try me understand. And persuade you. Does it make a difference? Because I think I've always been of the opinion that it doesn't make a difference, one person. When realistically, I know that if everyone thinks that, mm. We're a Nobody little would vote. Exactly. But what would you say to someone like me or a viewer who might not be voting or can't decide what to do? Why should people vote? I think it's about the country being run by those who turn up. And if you think about you think about all of the challenges that the country faces, you know, the National Health Service mm -hmm. or your know, wages, so many people are struggling to pay the bills, you know, energy bills, um, the fact that there's so much, so many low-paid jobs, insecure jobs, zero-hours contracts. I guess you might, may know people on zero, you know, really insecure, mm -hmm. insecure work, or or the prospects for young people, schools. You know, all of these things. You know, we we can sort of complain about them, but it's really government that can make a difference to them. And and if you vote on May the seventh, and obviously I hope you vote Labour, but if you if you vote on May the seventh, that you know, you've got a say. You know, and if you I'm don't, if you don't, you, you don't have a say, and then. You may still carry on complaining about those things, but you haven't even had a chance to try and exercise have the right your voice. To, do you? Well, you probably do have the right to complain, uh, but, but if but you haven't voted, exactly. I think something that I've also thought before is, um, even if I vote, all the parties to me seem so similar. Would you agree with that, or do you think they all they are vastly different? I sort of think we're very different. 
I mean, I think I think the fund. I'm asking the wrong person. No, you <laughs> are sort of. Uh, <laughs> Do you think uh, it's yeah, worth exactly. voting Labour at <laughs> Miliband? <laughs> I think the sort of fundamental difference is this question about how do you think a country succeeds? I think there's a sort of conservative view that if you look after the like the really the riches, mm -hmm. then they'll be okay and the wealth will sort of magically trickle down to everybody else. I, I sort of take a different view, which is look after working people, look after ordinary working people, mm -hmm. and then the country's more successful. Just, just take this issue of zero hours contracts. So these are these contracts that don't, don't specify how many hours or how much work you're gonna get mm -hmm. each week okay. uh, or even each day. So there'll be people who like don't know until like 6 a.m. that morning when they've got work that day. Well, think about what that means. That means you don't know how many hours you've got, you don't know what wage you're gonna bring in, you don't know whether you can pay your bills, bring up your family. Now, you know, as a fundamental difference, we're gonna like ban those things. We're gonna say after 12 weeks, you'll automatically get a regular contract. And that's just like one of many, many differences between us. I think a lot of people would be happy with that. Yeah. Before you got into the job that you're in, yeah. before, um, you were the leader of the Labour yeah. Party. When you were choosing somebody to vote for, what did you look for to make that choice? Not necessarily uh, the actual policies, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but what helped you make that choice? Was it maybe watching things on the TV debates or reading things or the leaflets that came through the door or meeting politicians? I suppose I mean, it's a bit you know, different for me because I joined the Labour Party when I was 17, so I was sort of... Oh, you were already in there so by I was 18. Sort of, so I was, yeah, so I was sort of... I was sort of committed, but but you know, for me, and uh, this obviously makes me ages me a bit. You know, I was growing up in the 1980s. I went to my local comprehensive in uh, in North London, and you know, Mrs. Thatcher was in power then, and you know, it, it felt the country felt incredibly unfair, mm -hmm. and it was a time of of like deep division in 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 the society, and and I like you know the thing that imperiled kind of impelled me to join the Labour Party was. A sense that you know we need to change things. So I suppose I was a bit committed, but but I mean, look, you ask an important question. What 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 did I look for? Obviously, the party label was important to me, but you want a good local representative who'll work hard for you uh, as well, and 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 you know, so so that so that's also important. That's something I think perhaps a lot of people don't know about because um, before I looked into it, actually, I just thought you would go in before I voted and mm. pick which prime minister mm -hmm. um, you would like. But actually, that's not quite how it works, is it? You pick the representative from that party for your local area, don't you? Uh, exactly. So in each constituency, there are 650 constituencies across the country. Each mm -hmm. area picks its own local representative. Okay. And there are Labour candidates obviously standing uh, throughout England, Wales and Scotland, not, not in Northern Ireland. And other parties also. And other parties also. <laughs> uh, and um, uh, and then they, you know each person's elected, and then that's what's happened. You know, then they're elected to the House of Commons. So then, does it work in so in those six hundred and fifty constituencies? Whoever gets the most, if Conservative get the most, exactly. or Labour or Green exactly. or exactly. any of the others, then that that's that's the winner. Exactly, and that's the person that's elected. And then, how long do they be the Prime Minister for? Well, so those are the MPs. So they're elected as the MPs, and they yep. and and now we've got it's for five years. Okay. So you're elected for five years. Did it used to be less? Well, it used to be, so, so this government that we've got at the moment, this Conservative government, introduced a system whereby it's fixed for five years. It used to be, the Prime Minister used to decide when to call an election, which was quite right. a big advantage, yes, potentially, sure. yeah. uh, for the Prime Minister. So, so, uh, yeah, so that so was a good thing, the Conservatives did. Uh, we agree with that, actually. Yeah, yeah we agree great. with actually having you know, a, fixed, a, fixed, a fixed period of people being elected. That's great. I think that's pretty much go and vote, whoever you decide you to vote for. And actually people have got till Monday, people have got till Monday to register to vote. Because okay. in order to vote, you've got to actually be registered. If they haven't registered by then, because this video goes up after Monday. Right. So if you've already registered, I hope you have. Yeah, then you, you need to have registered uh, to vote in order to, uh, uh, in order to do so. I've got a question for you though. Yes. It, I'm not asking you your vote, but tell me what you'll be guided, I mean what you, I know you said you didn't, you yep. voted every election, but what would you be guided by? What would be the things that matter to you um, as, a, as a mum, given the job you do and, and all of that? The things that matter to me would be education because my daughter's about to start school, mm -hmm. so that's really important to me and I've been seeing all my friends, we've actually already chosen our school for our daughter and her place was secured a while ago, that's good. Um, but I know that a lot of my friends are going through the anxious weight of it's hard, isn't it? what primary school, so that's interesting to me. And I think as well the NHS because it was mm. never something that I really used until I had my daughter and I actually had quite a complicated delivery and I found them to be so fabulous and so I helpful. Know. and. A lot of people have a, a lot of negative things to say about the NHS, but I found them nothing but great. So those are the two things that I would yeah, be I mean interested in. The NHS at. is an incredibly precious institution, yep. isn't it? 
I think so. And it's yeah. got to be sort of protected and, and preserved for the future. And then this. I think we moan a lot about it. Yeah. But if we didn't have it, we'd all moan a lot more. No, and if you think about America, for example, mm -hmm. you know, they've got. They don't have an NHS, they've got sort of private health care and all of that, and lots of people don't my have insurance. My friend Marie, who lots of my audience yeah. know, Marie Bits and Clips, her daughter had to have a bottle of antibiotics once because she had um, a chest infection, and it was $50 for a bottle of antibiotics, which we got for free, and I was like, that's insane. Even mm. if they were mine, I would have only had to pay, I think, seven or eight pounds for a prescription, so. And this issue of schools. And school this has just become a yay NHS for It is, but also, you know, that schools and, and yeah, there are lots of kids in being taught in classes, quite kind of increasingly big class class mm -hmm. sizes, and lots of yes. parents not getting their places, and that that's that's, that's kind of a worry, time. isn't it? Yes. Like for um, uh, particularly when your kids are smaller. Which mine is. Darcy's only so, four. So is she about to start reception then? Yes, she's in nursery at the moment, and she'll go to school in September. I have one final question yes. for you, and it is a bit tricky. Yes. Because I have seen Nikki and Sammy's video. I know what you're going to you ask me. I think I know what you, you know. If you had to vote yeah. for your favourite YouTube channel, even though you yeah. have already said Nikki and Sammy, if you wanted to change your mind, that yeah. would be fine. I'll change my mind. Will I'll you? I'll say you. Okay, great. <laughs> That's brilliant. So I mean, obviously, no offence, no offence to Nikki and Sammy. All the offence, Nikki can I and vote Sammy. For, can I vote for both of you? Do you think? We could have um, a coalition YouTube channel. Right, okay, go on then. That's the one coalition I'll be I'll be in favour of. Okay, that's what we'll do then. Nikki <laughs> okay. and Sammy, give me a call. We've got a new project. Well thank you ever thank so you much. Thank you very much. Can I shake hands? You can, thank, thank you very much. Thank that's you not very, very much. official. Okay. Um, if you would like more information, I will put some links below and all my other stuff as well. Don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe and be very nice in the comments. I know this is an unusual video and I don't often have or ever have politicians on. Usually it's makeup in my bedroom, but it's nice to have a change, so let's all be friendly below. Alrighty, thank you for watching. Bye. Thank you very much.